Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. My name is Todd Hunter, Assistant National Communications Director for DAV. Now we normally like to do these information seminars with all of our members uh, at our annual midwinter conference in Washington, DC, as well as our national convention, wherever that might be. This past year, scheduled to go to, da to Dallas, but obviously because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we unfortunately had to cancel. But that doesn't mean we don't want to get some information to you, and that's what we're doing here today. With me, my special guest is DAV's Inspector General, Ed Hartman. Ed, thanks for joining us today. I'm hoping you can uh, just introduce yourself a little bit to our audience. Absolutely. Thanks, Todd. Uh, of course, uh, many folks will know me as uh, Ed Hartman. I've um, been DAV's Inspector General for the last uh, 12 years. Uh, prior to my appointment as uh, Inspector General, I'd served 13 years in many capacities to include a national service officer, national appeals officer, and uh, our director of voluntary services uh, over the last uh, 25 years. So uh, it's been a, a good long uh, career for me. I enjoy it. And as our inspector general, tell us a little bit of kind of, you know, what that entails for you. As DAV's inspector general, it's very broad. It's, it's primarily to uh, maintain our uh, positive image in the community and to ensure that all of our members, chapters, and departments are in full compliance with the Constitution and bylaws of our organization at all levels. Okay, and as most folks know, we are a nonprofit organization. We rely solely upon the very generous donations of the American public to continue our operations, uh, giving uh, free services to the men and women who serve. Um, Tell me why some people donate to our entities. I, I think it's um, we have a very pure mission in terms of what we do as an organization. And I think that the general public uh, uh, sees that, understands that. And as a result of that, uh, rewards us in terms of providing donations to us. Uh, over the last 100 years, we have been widely known and very highly re uh, recognized as being the premier organization of providing services to disabled veterans and their families of all eras, not just a particular uh, era of veterans, but uh, uh, any veteran of any era. Um, and of course, uh, we do that through a variety of methods, whether that's through our service programs, our advocacy programs. So uh, we've developed uh, and have uh, polished a very good reputation over the last 100 years uh, that people uh, can see what we do. They know that when they give to DAV, we are going to uh, put their money to good use and um, you know, certainly do all that we can to assist disabled veterans and their families um, at all levels throughout the country. Okay, so what kind of acti activities can DAV departments and chapters support? So typically, DAV departments and chapters are really more focused on uh, programs and services provided at the local level in their communities. Um, so uh, in many instances, uh, it's a matter of supporting their service officer program, whether that be their chapter service officer, their department service officers. Um, it could be their DAV transportation network for which we are uh, uh, very widely known. Yep. Every year we provide uh, you know, better than 100 uh, uh, vehicles and vans that are donated to VA medical centers across the country. We provide the volunteers to drive those vans out in the communities, pick up veterans, getting them to their health care appointments at VA facilities uh, to uh, get the care that they're entitled to. And in many instances that are uh, is really a life saving, uh, life saving care. Um, they can also support our VAVS uh, programs, uh, of course, which many of our chapters and departments do, uh, where our local chapter members go into VA facilities throughout the country, uh, provide recreational opportunities for the inpatients at the hospital, volunteer in the outpatient clinics during the course of the day. They also provide the same services at state-operated uh, veterans facilities and nursing homes across the country as well. So. Uh, in addition, of course, DAVs uh, over the last um, probably 20 years or so has, has been very um, uh, well recognized for involvement with our rehabilitative events associated with the Winter Sports Clinic yeah. and more recently the T-Tournament. So 
all of those things that are DAV branded, that uh, DAV is in one way, shape or form associated with, those are all activities that DAV departments and chapters can certainly support without any question in terms of uh, anyone coming back to them and questioning where their donation went, that it wasn't necessarily spent on a DAV related activity. So uh, we also have our national service program, our Charitable Service Trust and Columbia Trust, which are all DAV uh, exclusive, that DAV chapters and departments can certainly uh, continue to support in the future uh, that would absolutely qualify as a DAV appropriate expenditure of funds. Okay, you talk about acceptable expenditures of funds. Tell, can you run down a little bit of kind of what kind of expenditures are considered unacceptable? Sure, there are uh, uh, a good number of unacceptable expenditures. Um, one thing that we have to remember is when we go out in the community and we present ourselves to the American public, uh, whether that be in front of a Walmart or a fans club or a grocery store, and we ask for donations, we're doing so using the name of DAV. So it's our responsibility to spend those funds um, as uh, provided by the donor. Uh, one thing that we should absolutely never find ourselves in a position um, of doing is providing those donated funds directly to other veteran service organizations. So it makes no sense for DAV members to stand out uh, and conduct forget-me-not drives to raise money to support DAV programs in their communities to simply turn around, you know, the very next month and provide a blanket donation or a general donation to another nonprofit veteran service organization. Um, if donors wanted those funds to be provided to another veterans organization, they certainly wouldn't would have provided them directly to them. Uh, they didn't. They provided those funds to DAV, and so they have an expectation, and we have an obligation to ensure that those funds are spent on DAV-specific programs. Now, that's not to say that uh, DAV departments and chapters cannot support uh, very unique and specific programs that are uh, provided by other nonprofit organizations. For example, if there's a homeless veteran stand down that's being sponsored by another veteran service organization uh, or a homeless veterans program or um, a food pantry of some sort that uh, benefits exclusively disabled veterans and their families, we can absolutely support those so long as those donations are earmarked very specifically for those programs. Um, so that in the future, if the public comes back to us, we can, and, and they catch wind of the fact that we may have supported another organization, we can say, yes, we did so, but for this very specific purpose, which is in line with our chartered purpose of providing services to disabled veterans and their families. One of the other uh, big um, uh, no-nos that we see, if you will, uh, for lack of better terms, are donations to organizations that have absolutely positively nothing to do with veterans or uh, their families or anything affiliated with our chartered purpose. So uh, every once in a while we will see donations uh, made to uh, police unions, firefighter associations, uh, churches, uh, youth groups. While each of these organizations are very, you know, worthy and, and uh, very commendable organizations, uh, donations to those organizations certainly do not fall within any, uh, any uh, purview of DAV's charter purpose of assisting ill and injured veterans and their families. Okay. So how is spending by the various chapters across the country, how is that tracked and who's responsible for that oversight? Well, uh, one of the uh, accountability is very important to DAV uh, at all levels, and um, it's very important to our donors. Uh, each and every year, every entity of DAV is required to provide an annual financial report um, so that uh, we can show the general public what we are doing with their funds. Uh, at the national organization level, we have the responsibility of reviewing and providing oversight of all of our 52 state departments, which are 
all 50 states plus uh, the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. Okay. And, and uh, a good number of the 1,300 local chapters and communities across the country. Um, those chapters that uh, bring in more than $50,000 during the course of the year in their fundraising efforts, they're required to provide an annual financial report to the national organization as well. And at that time, we look at and we validate um, what they are doing with their funds to ensure that they are spending those funds on appropriate DAB related uh, activities and programs. Uh, and then, of course, in the rare instance when we identify uh, a questionable uh, contribution or support of a program that is completely unrelated to DAB, we're very quick to uh, contact that entity, remind them of our chartered purpose, and uh, get them back in line with uh, supporting truly all DAB related programs. Uh, department leadership uh, also has a very uh, responsible uh, uh, part of reviewing these annual financial reports of their chapters. Because um, yep. at the end of the day, uh, each of those chapters is the subordinate entity of those departments. So we really rely upon our departments to do exactly what we do uh, at the national level when they get those annual financial reports, look at them, make sure that the expenditures are in line with our chartered purpose. Um, everything is accounted for so that we can reassure the American public that uh, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing with their money. Okay, awesome. Uh, before we go, you got any tips for some of the chapters on how they can be good stewards of our donated funds? Absolutely, I think uh, probably the very best thing to keep in mind is to remember or develop a mindset uh, as a DAB leader, whether we're the commander, the adjutant, or the treasurer, or the members that are voting on issues at our chapter meetings on what programs we're gonna support. Develop the mindset that this isn't our money. This, this money belongs to the general public. We're just the funnel for which those funds make their way from the public to disabled veterans and their families in the community. So if we can Always put that first and foremost in mind that um, you know, we have an obligation to spend our donors' funds uh, in line with their wishes uh, will probably never go wrong. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, as long as we're supporting very specific DAB-related and branded and sanctioned programs, we can never get in trouble with the public. We can never get in trouble with the Internal Revenue Service. Um, and... Um, uh, one of the things that I always like to keep in mind is that service to veterans is very broad. Um, and of course, it varies from community to community. There might be a need in one community for uh, you know, homeless veterans programs. There might be a need in a, one community for uh, a food pantry. Um, so we don't want to ever find ourselves in a position of telling or dictating uh, what a chapter or department should do with their funds that they bring in from the public, uh, so long as that uh, they are providing those funds uh, in a reasonable way for the benefit of ill and injured veterans and their families of all areas across the country. So uh, if chapters, departments just ask themselves the one very simple question before considering making a donation to any particular program or activity is, does this donation from our chapter or our department benefit disabled veterans and their families? And if the answer is overwhelmingly yes, then we are not going to have any problem justifying to the American public um, the decision of that chapter or department to support that very particular program. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate your time today, Ed. This would have been, you know, as much as we all wanted to be in Dallas uh, to, to be with our members at the convention this year, obviously it, it couldn't happen. Uh, but, you know, we're doing these uh, virtual seminars because we want to get them something. And I appreciate that. No doubt there are going to be folks who see this who have additional questions at, and, and they want to get a hold of you. So can you put uh, what's the best way to get a hold of you? For those sure. uh, absolutely. The best way to get in touch with me is um, uh, call national headquarters and ask for me or simply 
probably the best way to um, ensure a very timely response is to shoot an email to me. And my email address is simply ehartman at dav.org. Ed Hartman, DAV's Inspector General, thank you so much for your time today. And I uh, hope you stay safe through all this. And, uh, you know, we'll see each other again. All right. Sounds good. Hey, thank you very much, Todd. Take care, my friend.